We're here at the troll pond. I've got myself a sling bow from Simple Shot. I'm gonna be messing around with this. I'm not promising any fish, but I'm promising you some sling bow fishing. As you guys know, it's been a huge challenge to get this pond going. Not only are we dealing with low water levels, we've lost about three feet, but the pond's also been extremely warm. Thankfully, I think we're through the bulk of the heating and we're into the cooling. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a water temperature measurement right now. We'll throw this thermometer in here. We'll figure out where we're at. We're curious about water temperature because we wanna know when the fish are gonna be suffering and also now when they're gonna to start to feed. Fish uh, feed at optimal temperatures around 17 Celsius, 15 to 18 Celsius and in that range. Above that, they stop feeding. Uh, if they get well above that, the food basically goes right through them. They don't digest it, they don't metabolize it, they just waste it. So we have, it's still pretty warm at the surface. It's, uh, it's about 18 Celsius. The surface is 18, but the subsurface is gonna be a lot cooler. And you know the fish don't live at the top of the water. We had 26 Celsius at the top at one point, which was critical levels. So I've got this temperature gauge on the leash here, this fish pond thermometer. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cast it out a little bit further into deeper water and I'll let it sit there while we're doing a little experiments with the sling bow and uh, see what we can come up with. I wanna catch a fish for dinner tonight. So between that and maybe some snorkeling in some super cold water, we'll get a fish. Well, we might have to fish one out with a fishing rod. We'll see. We're, we're gonna come home with a fish today. How about that as a guarantee? All right guys, enough jibber jabber. Let's see if I can actually shoot this thing or if I'm gonna make myself look ridiculous. Simple Shot actually gave me a little bit of a primer on this, as best you can, you know, over the interwebs. You can shoot it with fingers, so it's got a little uh, nubby thing here you can grab with your fingers, but he said he finds a lot of people don't have the finger pinch strength to be able to hold it back at full draw. I seem to, because I shoot fingers. That's my primary way of shooting a compound bow. Uh, I'm not gonna attach the reel or anything like that, because obviously this is a carbon arrow I use for bow hunting. Uh, I'll switch over to the real one later and do some practice shots. Not on the real fish, just in the in the pond itself. Let's give it a go and see what happens. Hey, that doesn't shoot all that bad now, does it? I think I got the hang of this. What do you say you make a deal here? If I can't successfully sling bow the trout I'm gonna jump in the water with the snorkel set <laughs> in the freezing freezing cold water and I'm gonna go for my attempt number two with the spear pole how about that because I think the water is clear enough I should be able to see the fish this time because last time I couldn't see them at all if you've ever shot a bow it's not much different if you ever shot a slingshot the old school slingshots or compound bow, it's all kind of melding together. And I'm hitting bullseyes now. So I'm just shooting instinctively. I'm not aiming on anything. Before I start flinging this air randomly at live animals, let's throw out some uh, weeds and we'll see if I can hit these with the arrow. I, I was close, wasn't it? I caught something. <laughs> Check out what I caught. Oh, I lost it. I'll put the link in the description for all of these toys you guys can pick up. So RPM bow fishing for the air and the reel, and then simple shot for the sling bow. All right, I feel like my aim's close enough for these fish. So in the last pond episode, we actually cleared out this really wicked camp spot. Well, it's wicked, it's work in progress, I should say. So we got rid of all the willows over here in this area. So this is kind of like a neat peninsula we have going on. We've got a little bay over here. And then we made a fire pit so we can actually do camp outs here. My idea is to get some of the sand we dug up when we dug out the pond and then fill this whole area in maybe, you know, a foot or two of sand so that all these willows here that are gonna grow up in almost no time at all will, sp will kind of suppress them. We got a nice view of the pond from this spot over here and it's nice and sheltered. And if we put enough sand over here, it'll kind of go in and then we can have a little beach for swimming. We are gonna be processing our fish soon. Um, probably in the next two months or so, as you're watching. Oh, mosquito just flew right into my mouth. 
gross. In the next two or three months, we're gonna be looking at harvesting these fish and then moving on to the next thing. And the next thing may be a pond dig. We're gonna look at between seven and a 10 day dig, which is gonna be in the thousands of dollars, which is basically why we didn't dig it so deep in the first place. I wanna give you guys another look at the pond from the opposite side here. And you can see, minus the uh, hump here, this is the, all the stuff we had dug out of this section. We can dig this whole area out right back to the roadway here. That's a lot of pond. So I've been carrying around this fish feed with me and every time I come out to the pond, I can toss a little bit in. So let's go do this now and make sure the fish are happy and healthy. So thankfully our water's cleared up a ton since all that algae died off. Thanks to the dugout dude's aerator, we got a solar aerator running here pumping air directly into our pond. That's gonna allow us to do some bow fishing in here. Otherwise, we'd have no way of seeing the fish, which is a problem actually when I did some spear fishing, snorkeling. You're also probably wondering how I'm gonna even see the fish with all the riffles on the water. Well, the fish will actually come up for the feed. So if I throw some feed in there and then throw an arrow in there, I'll probably end up getting a fish, right? That's something to aim for, isn't it? All right, we got the secret formula here. I can actually see fish swimming down there, which is great. Ah. ah. Wondering if this arrow is a little too slow since this slow down right away. All right, dudes, deal's a deal. I did not get a fish with the uh, sling bow because I am not good at the sling bow. And also I think it shoots too slow or the arrow's too big. I think the arrow's too big for the rig. <sighs> Bathing suit on, into the cold drink we go. This time I'm gonna use the uh, three pronger. Last time I used the big beefy one and I think it was, well, I think it was too big for the type of fish that we have in here. And I'm gonna go only two lengths instead of the three lengths so that it's a little bit more maneuverable. I think I can get, I think I can get close enough. I don't know, I might have to get the third one. It's only this much length, but the super, super long one, I gotta re-rig every time and get it in the right spot. Um, that water's gonna be cold. I'll give you this guy's in, uh, in Fahrenheit, how about that? It looks like it is 60, maybe 66 or so. And then Celsius, it's it's still about 18, 17, 18 degrees. So it's not super cold. <laughs> but it's not super warm either. A commitment's a commitment. I told you guys I was gonna try again. Oh, look, a bunch of trout, bunch of trout swimming by. More trout. Man, they're active now. They're gonna try to avoid me as much as possible. I know that. But I only need one, one for dinner. I think I'm gonna pee in the water just so that there's a warm spot. Oh, 
I hope you guys saw that. I had, I actually had a trout on. Uh, it managed to slip off. I don't know. Maybe I'm not using the right tip. Maybe I need something different. You guys have any ideas? This, it was on. It was on real good. And I actually managed to catch up to the same fish again to try to get it. All right, uh, I don't want to injure too many fish. So I'm going to try one more time. If it doesn't work, then, you know, we're going to go back to the drawing board on this one. I'm going to catch a fish before I leave today, even if it's with a rod and reel. Of course, all the fish are gone now. I've <laughs> chased them out of this area completely. I'll throw some more feed in, let them have a little bit of rest. Fish don't have big brains. They're not going to remember this forever. And we're going to keep an eye on that fish to make sure it doesn't die. So we're going to stay here for a couple hours, see if it doesn't float up. Oh, freaking cold. Oh, anybody who thought it was uh, gonna be like shooting fish in a barrel. Oh, oh, never shot fish in a barrel. Uh, uh, oh, oh, haven't shivered this much since I was a kid. <laughs> oh, brutal. All right, I'm gonna get dried off. Uh, I catch a fish like an adult. Uh, this is just kid stuff. Well, it's super nice to feel normal again. Before I toss a line out in the water, I wanna give another shout out to our, one of our pond sponsors. Besides Linden, Trout Farm, Trout Hatcheries, Trout Pond for giving us all the fish. We got the dugout dude who sent us this really wicked direct air aerator. So it's pumping air directly in. He said when you guys watched that video that he got so many calls from all over the place including the US and he will deliver to the US so that's awesome. But uh, yeah man, he's gonna send us another pump because you guys love the system so much and you ordered it and you got a kick out of the video. Bubbling air directly into our pond from that, from the sun. And it took us like all of three seconds to put together. The only thing you need to get this thing set up is a pipe in the ground. We, we just want to make this portable because we are hoping to dig this out again. If it's up to you. It's up to you guys. You guys let me know. Alright, let's go catch a fish and bring it home for dinner. So Zach uh, Fowler and I have been talking to another YouTuber. You guys probably know who he is. His name is Ace. He has Ace, Ace videos. He does all kinds of fishing. He does spear fishing. Uh, we're getting hooked up. I sent him a link to some the bow stuff. So he might do some slingshot stuff. He might do some sling bow stuff. Anyway, the reason I bring him up is because we've been talking about collaborating him, me and Zach. So that's a future possibility. At some point in time, I'll probably go down and visit Ace and uh, he can show me some of the opportunities he has around his place. Maybe take me on uh, tropical spear fish. And uh, maybe we'll do a catch and cook giant sturgeon. You seen that video? And he catches octopuses and a whole variety of different things. All right guys, let's throw a line in here. Catch us the fresh fish. We could wait till the end and catch them when they're all big, but then we'll have a whole bunch of fish at the same time. It's nice to catch a couple fresh ones here and there and eat them throughout the year. So we're gonna let it sink and then we'll give it some action and then we'll let the fish take it. There's a bite. We'll just let the slack off of it, see if it grabs it. Yeah, there we go. There we go. There we go. Fish on. Oh, that's a good one too. Good fish. Oh, nice fighter. Nice one. Ah, oh, yes. Look at that fish. I wonder, 
I wonder if these are the fish that we put in when they were nine inches, because they've grown a whole lot. So that's the perfect size eater for me and my family tonight. Oh, and it swallowed it too. Yeesh. That's why we're not doing catch and release with these. We're not fooling around with these. These are, these are food fish. I'm gonna have to put this guy out. He swallowed it completely. But we're not catching and releasing these guys for this reason, because it injures the fish no matter what. I mean, there's always gonna be a certain percentage of fish that are gonna be fine. And uh, there's gonna be 5% of the fish that are just gonna, you know, they're gonna die no matter how good you handle them. Thanks again, Fritz, for the knife. Keep using it. It's a, it's a beautiful knife and it's super sharp. It does a really great job. And I wanna thank uh, you guys for joining me on the pond series. And if you guys wanna keep it running, you let me know. I'm happy to keep going with it. Uh, I think at some point we're, we'll have to expand the pond. So that's a consideration there. We're gonna get rid of all the guts out of this fish here. We'll feed it to the turtle. If you guys see the, the uh, Walmart camping video where we camped out at the pond here, there are two good sized turtles here that will be happy to get this food. All I'm gonna do is take the gills out I get rid of the gills, the stomach, the guts, all that good stuff. Toss her in there, rinse it out, and I'm going to head back home.